anybody who has autism. Maybe you know someone at your school or in your family who has it. They may shrink away from other people and not talk very much. They may not seem to be paying attention to things or people around them, or they may show repetitive behaviors like obsessively arranging objects or following very specific routines. Autism is a brain disorder that is fairly common. One out of every 150 people has it. In fact, more children will be diagnosed with it this year than with cancer, diabetes, and AIDS combined. Autism occurs in all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. Boys are four times more likely to have it than girls. Autism costs the nation over $90 billion a year, a figure that is expected to double in the next decade. While people with autism share common characteristics, each person is unique with their own strengths and challenges. Some people have extraordinary abilities known as savant skills. Some autistic children are able to create detailed artwork at an age when most are just starting to scribble. Others learn to read early or play musical instruments they have never been taught. One of the explanations might be that it's a neurological disorder. There's a lot of research to support that um, students or people with an autism spectrum disorder, they actually use the parts of their brain differently. So I'm sure there's some explanation through that. They actually socialize using a different part of the brain than you or I would use when we socialize. The, the strong memory comes from that. and so I. Assuming then we would say it's a neurological thing, mm -hmm. that ability to, that one part of the brain is much stronger. One internationally known artist with autism, Richard Waro, created detailed landscape drawings using wax oil crayons. He needed to see an image only once and could replicate it exactly from memory. He has sold over 1,000 drawings, some commanding up to $10,000 each. Today, I'm going to introduce you to an artist with similar abilities. Ben, an eighth grader at Whitewater Middle, began molding objects from clay when he was three. His sculptures are captivating and amazingly, he creates them in just minutes. Hi, my name is Ben. I'm 14 years old and today, I'm gonna show you my sculpting I'm gonna do. Elephant seals are the largest seals. They have a trunk like an elephant. Mm -hmm. They have tiny teeth. And they don't have scales. They have a smoothie skin called blubber. Well, I think what makes Ben like a savant is that he's had no training. He's had no art classes. He doesn't talk in an art language. He doesn't use artistic language. He doesn't talk about his mediums or his products. It just all comes out. He asks for clay. His Christmas list was pictures of material, dowels, stretchy material, and he made his mother this Christmas list of all these art things. He asked for wire and just began to sculpt wings, all just coming out of his own creativity. No, never an art class, not an art class um, privately or even in public school. He's come to some art classes, but it's all within his own genius. I think with him, what we started to notice is that he, he thought spatially. So he would, where other kids might think two-dimensionally or draw a, a real basic drawing, he would transpose that, he would, he would take it and translate it to um, three dimensions. And so that was pretty incredible to watch that develop over the years, that uh, he could either take a photograph and uh, immediately think of all the sides and the top and the bottom, or uh, just what was in his mind. We, one of the things I really enjoyed was we would go to a zoo and I'd just ask him to study uh, an, a lion or an elephant. And you could see it was like the, the wheels were turning and his eyes were, he was thinking about what he would do. And, and oftentimes he would start to do clay and, and his eyes were looking off in another direction. And you could just see the, the uh, processing happening as he thought about it as a whole piece, a three-dimensional piece. So I'd, um, early on we started to see that that was a different way of, of how he processed the information coming in. It's important to note that not all autistic people have savant skills like Ben. In fact, only about 10% do. 
Ben's mother hopes that someday her son will be able to use his skills as a means of being independent and economically self-sufficient. I would love to see him, I think because it gives him, he just gets a lot of pleasure out of it. So if he could, if he could support himself or make money doing something he enjoys, that would be everybody's dream, I would think. Academically, he's made um, strides. He's really made strides. Um, I would say socially, he has just really, that's where the progress has been. Because we were at home somewhat isolated. So since we've been here, social programs, the everything they do from point checks to schedules to picture cards and, and, and such, I think that to me is the biggest change. He just fits and, and seems much more typical than he did two and a half years ago when he came here. And I'm sure teachers and other people who've been here since the beginning could attest to that. Just recently, Ben won an award in the Kiwanis Art and Talent Show for a sculpture of a bear. It was his second consecutive award from the competition. Second place to Ben Tyrell. Ben's sister Emily is extremely proud of her brother. They spend quality time together watching movies and riding the family golf cart around Peachtree City. To Emily, her brother is normal. In fact, she says she didn't realize he had autism until she was in middle school. I don't know, Ben was just definitely in his own world a lot of the time, and the way he talks, he's very monotone, and I just noticed different things. And it probably, it was probably like fifth grade, because middle, I don't know, middle school I might have noticed a little more, but probably that, just his behavior in Walmart. <laughs> you don't normally put like plastic bags on your head and run around, so I noticed that. <laughs> he really is a great, phenomenal child, and from where we used to live, there wasn't that much options for him. And when we moved up here, there's so much more that the people did to help him at Whitewater. And he's just come such a long way. Thank you for listening, everyone. Dealing with an autistic child may seem frustrating, but with help, kindness, and understanding, autistic children can show improvement. April is National Autism Awareness Month. I encourage you to take time to learn more about this disorder by visiting the websites on your screen. For Channel 24, I'm Melinda Berry Dreisbach. Thanks for watching.